Spoon of consciousness. Let's raise our frequency. Welcome to the Spoon of Consciousness podcast. My guest today is Gerard, and I'll let him introduce himself. Good morning, and thank you. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Gerard O'Donovan, and I run a company called Noble Manhattan Coaching. We are a coach training organization. Okay, so I reached out to Gerard because obviously I'm uh, into the coaching space as well, and I just really wanted to find out, like, what is it that your company does? Well, we're a specialist company. We've been going for 20 years now, and we train men and women all over the world to be magnificent coaches. And we have different courses. We train people to be what we call life coaches or corporate coaches, executive coaches, and so on. But we specialize in that. Okay. So what got you into um, coaching in, in the beginning? Well, I ran a, a personal development company prior to this, and I had a stand, at a, an exhibition stand at a place called Olympia back in 1995. And while I was there over a three-day exhibition, I came across an American lady called Laura Berman Fortgang, and she was delivering a lecture on coaching, this new thing called life coaching back in the mid-90s. And I just fell in love with it. And I just thought, this is for me. Um, there was nothing in Europe then, nothing at all. So I went and trained with three different American companies over a, a year and then started to, to coach back here in the UK. But it was, it was very pioneering. People had no idea what it was. Um, when you'd say to people, you're a coach, they would say, how much is it from London to Manchester? And, uh, you know, and... People used to say to me, does your coach have toilets on board? And um, uh, so it, it was real pioneering days. <laughs> yeah, uh, even now, like I come into uh, quite a few misconceptions with coaching. Someone, I ask someone, um, you know, have, do you know what coaching is? And they say, yeah, it's like that thing that people need when their lives are really messed up and they are in a really bad place. I, and I always think to myself, like coaching is not for those who are in a bad place is for people who want to get to the next like place in their life like the basketball players need coaches and football teams and things like that um what so for, from your training to then starting this company like what was the journey like for you it was very interesting and quite tough um for three and a half years i delivered coaching practiced coaching um learned my skill i guess did my apprenticeship created coaching models and it wasn't until 1999 towards the end of that year that I started to train our first coaches so um, and now we're blessed now we have trained over 27,000 coaches um, worldwide in 30 countries we do it in seven languages now um, so we're, we're blessed but we, we're still on coaching is still a, a relatively young concept a young industry Life coaching, as we, we call it today, didn't really start until the late 80s. So we're still a very young industry. So uh, with, with that being said, um, do you see coaching becoming like one of the really most established things uh, coming up now? Oh, I, I definitely do. Um, you may be interested to know that right now it's the second fastest growing industry in the world. Now, it won't stay that forever, but um, number one, in case you're interested, is in IT and technology. Uh, hardware, software, that's just booming. But coaching is growing like a volcano right now. And it is being driven by the large corporates. Um, we just finished working with a little company called Coca-Cola um, earlier this year. And we had a contract with them to train 700 of their managers as coaches. We've done the same with Pepsi-Cola, Siemens, Boeing, Microsoft, and many others. So many of these large corporations are embracing the whole concept of coaching. And they want their managers to manage using coaching instead of, uh, how can I put this nicely, instead of command and control techniques, uh, using coaching methods. And then it flows from the companies down out into the, the greater population, that, and we hear about it. Um, and Eric Schmidt, who is the CEO of Google, so Google now, one of the top, top, top companies in the world, 
if you are the CEO, you would quite rightly consider you were doing quite well. Uh, people would consider you had achieved a great level of success. Even he has come out in the last six months. In fact, you can, he's done a short video on Google, on, on YouTube. And he says, I now firmly believe that everyone should have a coach. Um, because a coach can help you, you, me, anyone, to reach further than we could ever dream we could have reached before. And it's not about sport. Coaching can help us in, in, in areas of our life like health, wealth, relationship, career, stress, time management, parenting, uh, work-life balance, you name it. Coaching can help us to be more, see more, have more, do more, achieve more in all of those areas. So, okay, let, let's say like um, there's, there's a well-known statistic that a lot of coaches, uh, because the bar of entry is, is quite low at the moment, there's a lot of coaches earning less than twenty thousand pounds or dollars a year, um, and there are very few that are earning those top salaries. You know, people like Tony Robbins, Rich Litvin, these guys are earning quite a lot. What what makes the difference between these people? Like, why is there so much disparity? Yeah, it, it's very it, it's actually quite upsetting and it's very frustrating, um, especially for me to be a coach. You know, these men and women, they invest time, effort, money. Um, and then if they don't succeed, it's very frustrating. And what I've come to realize over the years is that there are two types of coaches. There are the good and the successful. And the interesting thing is the good are not always successful. And the frustrating thing is the successful are not always good. And what they are good at is marketing themselves. So actually, to be a good and successful coach, you need to have two different skill sets. One is the coaching, learning the coaching methods, the models, the techniques, the tools, the instruments, and so on. So you learn to be a good coach. But you, you also need to learn the various techniques necessary to build your business, to market yourself, to raise your brand, uh, to uh, using social media and many other techniques. So it's important that a man or woman who uh, trains to be a coach actually engages in both learning activities. Um, and the, the shame of it is many people train to be a coach and then they believe that their phone will start to ring. Um, you know, uh, and unfortunately that, that doesn't happen. They need to learn how to take their business out to the world and let the world know who they are, what they do, how they do it, why they do it, and so on. And we teach that just out of interest. We teach all of that. But so do other schools. There are great coaching schools out there. I think it's a really important thing to mention that the, the successful coaches are not always good. Um, I think you're, you're absolutely right. There is that element of if you know how to sell yourself, then you know that you will have clients. And unfortunately, yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of that. Uh, one of the first coaches I met before I started my course was someone who was extremely salesy. And he was basically selling me on the idea that if you pay me this amount of money, I will grow your practice with you. I will get you loads of clients. And I was like, oh, okay, how does that work? And he was saying, well, you've given me that money. So for you to make it back, you need to start charging people. And, and I just thought about it, like, this is not a pyramid scheme. I, I don't want to be involved in that. Like, it's not like you give me this money, then you charge the other people the same. So um, I'm just curious to know, like, what do you think are effective marketing strategies for, obviously without going into detailed specifics, but what, what would separate someone from being the um, you know, unsuccessful coach to, to getting on that way? Okay, well, first of all, it's important that you have a congruency about your brand. And very simple, childish things that the message should be the same all over the internet. So, if you are a coach, it's very important to have a presence on things like Facebook, on LinkedIn. Um, there is an argument now to say things like Instagram and Pinterest and Twitter. Um, 
and you and a website almost all coaches tend to have a website so the message must be the same you don't want to say on linkedin that you're a therapist whereas on facebook it says you're a coach and on your blog it says you're a management consultant even though you may in fact do all those things so it's important to give the same message because as soon as you start marketing and you make contact with an individual if they are vaguely interested in you and your service they will check you out they'll check you out online and it's very important that they get the same message on every platform on every program or service that you're using so that's just a simple thing um branding um i see many coaches who market themselves using their personal email you know john4572 at hotmail.com um, that's great for your mother and to communicate with your brother and your family and your friends and there's nothing wrong with that but not for business you shouldn't contact the head of hr for a local company with a gmail account you know it sh- so your business name your your domain or url your email should all be congruent um, and I think most people who listen to this will understand what, what that means. Um, very easy to do, very cheap to do, um, childishly simple to set up, but yet many don't. So little things like that. Then it's important that you, as a coach, you, have, you must understand that your, your job is not so much selling if you want, if this is the marketing side, not the coaching. If you want to get clients, the selling is not what you should be engaging in. It's the two other things, building a database and building relationships. So building a database, building relationships. And a database is simply a list, a list of people that you are in communication with on a regular basis. And it's important to build a relationship with them, not sell to them. People don't want to be sold to on a daily basis. Um, People like to find out who you are, what you do, what's going on in your life. Are you married? Are you single? Do you have children? Where do you live? What are your hobbies? They really do. Um, There's an old saying, people like people that are like them. So they want to deal with you if they like you. Um, And they're only going to like you if they get to know you. Who are you? What do you do? Uh, What do you do in your spare time? What, What music do you like? And so on. So The key thing is, once you've set up your brand, your profile, you've made sure it's congruent, you have your website, you start to build a database. Um, And you should have the attitude that however big your database is, it's not big enough. Um, And you should almost become a little bit paranoid about the size of your database, you know, always wanting to to grow it and grow it. Um, some of the great people in this industry, Peter Thompson, I was talking to him last month. His database is now 258,000 active email addresses. And he emails to them pretty much on a twice a week basis, you know. Um, so building your database and then communicating, sending a little news flash, a newsletter, a communique on a regular basis so they get to know who you are, what you do. And they build up a, a distance relationship with you. Mm. That's the real key. Yeah, I've, I've seen that. This is a relationships, people, business more than anything. Um, from what I've seen so far, there is so much more to it than just being a good coach. That's like probably 25% of it. And the rest is how are you active in the space? Um, one thing I'm really interested to get your opinion on, Gerard, is what do you think it is about the way our society operates or is engineered that is producing the mindset that requires coaching, if that makes sense for you. Right. I guess I look at it in a slightly different way. Um, And I don't want to, you know, scare your listeners off by getting too etheric or spiritual here, but I, I believe that the universe creates what it needs um, at various times throughout history. And the world right now is going through, I feel, um, a challenging time. There is, uh, on the one hand, a wave of aggression sweeping the planet, unlike anything we've ever seen in human history before. 
Um, you see this on the television, newspapers, it's, it's everywhere. But on the other hand, there is also a wave of awareness sweeping the planet, unlike anything we have ever seen in human history before. And the two are rising, a, a wave of aggression and, and um, violence and a wave of awareness. And there are millions of people out there, what I would call seeking, seeking an answer. They don't always know where to look, but at least they're seeking. And the two are rising, and it's almost as if they're coming to a, to a head. Um, and I believe, personally, that coaching is something that can change the world. I believe it can change people, it can change their families, it can change their companies, it can impact their communities, it can impact a country. Because coaching is all about, the, the, the three principles of coaching are non-judgmental, non-directional, and coaches don't have the answer. The answer lies within every human being. So it's inside us, not outside, not out there in here. And coaches work with clients, helping clients to understand that, that the answer is within them. And I feel that coaching is something that, you know, didn't exist 30, 40 years ago, the way we know it now. Now it does. It's growing. And it's growing because people are embracing it, because I feel that somehow inside they recognize the truth in coaching, that the answer really is within, not without. Although people don't, they don't put it in those words, in those terms, but they have that feeling. They have that intuitive feeling about it. Um, and I really do believe that it's uh, an initiative whose time has come because it is needed right now. Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying about the universe having balance in, in the sense that, yes, there might be terrorism and these kinds of things, but there's also this new age of like consciousness, the belief systems are evolving past the point of you know, oppression and regressive ways of thought. Um, and it's quite interesting for me, you know, whenever I speak with clients or people who are interested in coaching, there's always, um, okay, not always, but quite often there is the, this uh, breaking through the barrier of fear that's kept them in their place um, and, and hence them wanting to go forward. Um, I'm just interested to know your thoughts, like what, what have you seen are some effective ways of challenging that fear but in a non-directional way, because I think it's quite easy for us to identify, oh, that's fear, let's just go down this route. Like, how, how do you tackle these things? Yeah, and it's not easy. You know, uh, there, there's that famous book from 30 years ago by Susan Jeffress called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And that's a wonderful statement, and you read the statement and you nod your head wisely and you think, oh, yes, of course. But actually, in real life, it's not that easy. When you have fear... It can paralyze you, literally paralyze you from taking action, from uh, even thinking clearly, even thinking straight. Your whole thinking process becomes clouded when you are in real, real fear. Um, and, you know, there's these other clever little self-development sayings, F-E-A-R, which really means false expectations appearing real. Um, and again, you read them and you go, oh, yes, but... Actually, no, in the real world, it's tough to deal with fear. It really is. And coaches are good at this. As a, as a professional coach, you and I and our colleagues, we learn methods and techniques to help our clients go deep within themselves and see the real truth and to separate the truth from the fiction. Because a lot of fear actually is based on things that are not always real but they feel real they feel hugely real to us you know uh, and fear can affect people emotionally physically intellectually you stop eating you feel literally sick to your stomach you've heard that saying many a time and coaching is wonderful because when a good coach sits down with a client who is feeling those things they can help them to look in them side, in, inside and they can help them to access every human being's incredible power and strength. And they can help to almost ignite a fuse within that human being that will light up and overcome that fear. And 
to help people to believe. One of the great problems out there in society today is a lack of self-confidence linked to a lack of self-belief. People don't believe that they can do things, that they can achieve, that they are strong. And I guess the, wor the word that would encompass all of that is, um, how can I say, empower. Coaching empowers people. It gives them back the power, whereas fear takes away your power. Mm, yeah, there's a, I see that there's a great deal of disempowerment going on. And, and it's a, I don't want to blame society or anything like that, but I think it's perpetuated by the education system, how we're taught about ourselves when we're young. Like I was having a conversation with someone the other day and we were saying like the education system doesn't teach us how to learn about ourselves. And I think any education without education of the self is incomplete. So, you know, with, with all of that being said, what what do you think is the most effective way to empower someone? Um, you know, we, we're, we're speaking about going within, showing them the real truths about themselves. But I feel like there is a great deal of resistance in being able to accept these truths. You may think that you are, you know, you want to do this thing and it's really going to be good for you. But there might be a level of resistance inside you that's stopping you from from doing that. Yes, no, you're absolutely right. And I guess if you if you said to me, as you have, you know, what is the one thing that a coach can do to help? There are so many to choose from, but the one that comes to mind would be what I would call values. When you are able to help a man or woman get back in touch with their own true core values, it completely changes who they are it changes their outlook on life. It changes their decision-making ability. It becomes much easier. And here's the problem. You see, everything has values. You and I as individuals have values. A family has values. A community has values. A company has values. And a country has values. So what happens, we, we come into the world as little children and we take on the values of our family and we start to develop our own values. But then as we grow older, we then start to take on the values of those around us. And today the problem is that we don't live in wonderful villages anymore. There's an old African saying, isn't there? I, I, I forget the words exactly, but it's something like it takes a village to raise a child. Um, and and the, the concept of that is beautiful, that you learn from everyone in the village and they all look after each other. But we don't live like that anymore. And now millions of people for the last 20 years, are be, their values are being influenced by the television, by social media, by Hollywood, by Bollywood, by uh, all of the... And many of those values, I have to tell you, are just not good. They Honestly, they just are not right. They're not empowering. And we have now millions of people around the world who are looking at themselves as lesser than they are. They look at these top people, wonderful stars, they see them on YouTube, they see them everywhere, and it makes them feel inadequate. And that's a real shame. And what a coach can do is using uh, various, what we, we use the term values elicitation exercises, but it doesn't matter. It, it's working with a client, helping them reach inside and reconnect with their own true core values so that they suddenly realize what is important to them. And when that happens to a human being, oh my goodness, it, it's like, light the blue touch paper and retire to a safe distance. It, they, they become like a, like a heat-seeking missile, you know? Uh, and, and all of a sudden, the media messages that used to affect them now no longer have an impact. It's like the old Star Wars movie. They've put up the force field and now the messages don't get through. Mm. You know, I really like, uh, I really resonate with everything you said. And I see so much of my own transformation over the last few years in that, um, you know, I'm, I'm not that old, I'm 25. And, you know, in the last couple of years, 
really distancing myself from everything that's in the media, like this little bubble over here and really focusing on what's going on in here. That has been, like you said, heat seeking missile. Now I'm like on a mission. I feel like I'm going in a direction that I've chosen rather than trying to adhere to what's popular or what's trending or trying to keep up with these things. And I'm really glad that you, you know, obviously coaching is non-directional, but I'm really glad you said that these values are not right. And it might sound like a bit of a, you know, brash statement, but when, when you say that for me, what it means is like, they're, like you said, they're not empowering. And I think that we are very much encouraged to give away our power to, to anyone who's seeking it, whether that's the education system, whether that's uh, people in our lives, like, you know, parents, siblings, uh, relationship partner, we are constantly being encouraged to say, everything you need is outside of you. And once you have that, it will fulfill you and then you'll be okay. But that fulfillment lasts a couple of minutes, maybe sometimes it lasts a little bit longer. But, you know, I see that there's a lot of this um, forego your own power and direction to receive the outwardly validation of whoever's outside. So with that being said, like, what do you think it is that is so powerful about receiving the outwardly validation or acceptance uh, instead of seeking our own? Well, when you reach inside and you get in touch with your true core values and it empowers you, it's almost as if you have learned a truth. You, you, you are in touch with the truth and the truth is powerful. The truth, there's an old book that uh, says, you know, years ago, the truth shall set you free. Uh, and that is a very true statement. When you come in touch with the truth about yourself, it sets you free from the pressures that many people feel in today's society. The pressures are no longer, it's almost now as if you're, what, you're making your way through the world without being affected by all of this. All of a sudden, you know, so you're seamlessly making your way through the world without effort, whereas before you had to fight your way through on a day to day basis. Um, you learn the truth about yourself, what's important to you, what isn't important to you, what you truly want, what you don't want. Um, yeah. That's, that's certainly very empowering. And I think um, it's funny you mentioned the truth will set you free. I think the truth will beat the hell out of you first. And then, and then you've got to accept it. Like, okay, yeah, that, that is the case. I had, I had a very hard time uh, swallowing the truth about myself and who I really was and the lifestyle I was really living. And I see that um, much of the transformation that happens in coaching happen like we are very privileged to witness this thing happening inside someone else and the introspection that you get during and after um, a coaching session and even in the build-up to the next one that is like the most powerful aspect of it it's the the ability for the coach to reflect okay this is everything you've told me these are the words you've used yourself how true is this and to really be able to assess yourself in that honest way is extremely powerful. But yeah, I think um, a lot of people aren't ready to face the truth about themselves or who they are or where they're going right now. So I think that's where we come into a lot of conflict with others. While when we may have learned something that's extremely powerful and we're trying to introduce it to others, we get a lot of resistance. And, and I think that, that's quite a difficult thing to, uh, to be able to handle. Sure. And the other, the other wonderful thing about coaching is when you as a coach, when we work with a client, you know, the truth is we learn as much from every session as the client does. Um, we, we should almost be paying them if the truth be known, um, because we benefit also from every single client session that we do. Um, and we grow, we learn every single time. Mm, that's very true. I think um, the so the the coaching course that I did it was called a transformational coaching course, and it was like I I was under the impression that we we're we're learning to make the transformation happen in someone else, but um, it it was really myself that went under the transformation process, and after experiencing that, then I was able to understand how to help someone else go through that. And it's so powerful, like uh, that's the one of the main words I always associate with coaching because 
there's so much power in honesty and it's not necessarily that you asking the coach what do you think of this because that's obviously not what a good coach does but the honesty in us just reflecting what we've seen what we've heard the patterns of behavior we're noticing i think that is extremely powerful so um Gerard like we we've spoken about some great concepts to do with coaching i'm just wondering like what what's next for your company like where do you want to take this well you 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 may or may not know but our core business is noble manhattan coaching we a coach training school but we have also created a number of other divisions because we want to support our coaches worldwide so we own the icn international coaching news which is we're blessed is now the largest coaching magazine in the world and we want to use that to spread the world the word of coaching even further uh, and that's a free magazine. We employ whole teams of people to run that, editors, managing directors, graphics designers, but we give the magazine away free. We also own Coach Radio, um, the, the largest coaching plat radio platform in the world. We have a deal with iTunes, with Stitcher, and we allow all of our students and coaches to have their own monthly radio show. And we do that in 11 languages. And we wa I want to expand that and, and, and bring that to to many, many other coaches around the world to help them have a voice and uh, record their voice forever so they can have their own monthly show. We, we own Coach Finder, which is the largest coaching um, list or registry in the world. And it helps coaches to, f or clients rather, to find coaches. We have 17,000 coaches registered and we do that for free. So any coach in the world, no matter who they are, can register on our Coach Finder. And we, we have the Alpha Group. The Alpha Group, um, that's why I'm in London today. We're running a five-day course. We have people who have flown in from France, Bulgaria, Romania, Spain, all over the world, uh, Australia. And the Alpha Group specializes in helping business owners because, again, they are key to the, the future of every country, every community. And we want to help business owners become real leaders, leaders in their field, leaders in their community. And we want to expand the Alpha Group um, worldwide. So we have quite a, an audacious 10-year uh, growth plan um, with all of our divisions. Um, and we'll just have to hope to God that we, we have the strength and the time to, to carry it out. You know, is while you're speaking to like while you're speaking about these things, I just it, I can't help but think you do so much, and I am someone who aspires to do have a lot of things like going on in the future, and I'm growing those things right now. What what do you think is a absolute necessary key to be able to execute on these levels? Okay, two things, three things. <laughs> um, Two things, you need to have a picture in your mind. Some people would call it a vision, uh, but you need to have a, a, a picture in your mind of what it is you're trying to, to do or see or be or achieve or have, you know? So uh, you have your vision. The next thing is people. You cannot do it on your own. I, I absolutely, positively promise you, you cannot do it on your own. Everything is about people. So it's about and when you begin, there's only you, only you. Um, and then through the power of your vision, you attract one person to come and work with you and then another. And, and slowly you start to build an organization. But it's all about working or attracting the right quality caliber and people with the right integrity to work with you. And the third thing is it's a combination. We use a, uh, it, it's realizing where to focus because there's only 24 hours in a day and it's easy to become overwhelmed and to have a to-do list that's just so long it, it scares you um so it's very important to be um to be able to sift what is important that you do from the trivial so i use the phrase the important few from the trivial many and to be able to sift through and just focus on the really important things that are there to help you or are needed to help you achieve your vision. Uh, because it's so easy to become overwhelmed by, by everything.
You're so right, Gerard, and I think I've seen that in my own journey. Like when I was trying to start even the blog, like I just thought, oh, I've got to get the graphics, I've got to get the website, domain. Like I, I, it was every, and, it, and for like a few months, I was just crippled. I didn't execute on anything. I had the content ready, but I didn't have anything to put it on. And I think it's so important to have that crystal clear vision and using things like the law of attraction is great. And there's a lot of emphasis placed on that. But it's not just about your thoughts. You've got to put the actions to correlate the, to, to the goal behind it. Um, I think like we, we could talk about um, a lot of things for, uh, to do with that for, for many hours. But I, I'm really interested to know your thoughts like for the, for the up and coming coaches, for those who are either looking to get into it or looking to grow their practice. What advice would you give to those people, whether they be young, old, in between, whatever? Well, two pieces of advice, really. Um, one is um, choose a decent coach training company. And there are many. There are, um, at the latest, there are 900 coach training companies in the world. So, but there are what we call the premier division. So if you go to any of these seven, eight or 10, what we would call top coach training companies, you will be well looked after. They will give you a good training course. So you need that. You need a good foundation. You need your good skills. So step number one, engage in a, a good quality coach training program. And then number two, find a mentor. Find a man or woman who has done what you want to do. Become, befriend them, reach out to them, contact them. You will actually find most of these guys and girls are great people. They have got a heart of gold. And they are more than happy to give you the benefit of their time, their experience, their knowledge. And there is nothing more powerful than a mentor to help you on your road. They will help you to avoid the mistakes, to avoid expensive mistakes, and to learn where to focus your energy to build your business. Mm. Well, this is an interesting thing, though. You know, um, in, in looking for a mentor, whether that be for public speaking or for entrepreneurship, it can be quite difficult to, you know, ask someone to give you their time. So what do you like in, in you know, in my experience, I've, I've approached someone and said, what can I do for you that's going to bring you value? And then in return, uh, me just being around you, I will learn. Like what's a what's a great value proposition to offer someone who you want to be the mentor? OK, I actually don't think you need to offer anything you, because that would put pressure on you. You know, you've got a young girl or a guy here who's just trained to be a coach. They don't have much money. They don't have much experience. I wouldn't say to them now you must offer something of value. Um, I have found and I've reached out to people over the years in all sorts of areas. When I'm learning a new method, a new technique, I, I, all I do is I just contact someone and say, hey, I'd like to buy you a coffee. Can I have 15 minutes of your time? That's it. Um, I just reach out and say, hi, look, I'm impressed by what you do. I, I love what you do. I'd like to learn from you. Can I have 15 or 20 minutes of your time? Can I buy you a coffee? And I have found people have got such a generosity of spirit. Um, most successful people are happy to do that. You don't, they won't ask anything from you and you shouldn't put yourself under any pressure by thinking that you have to give something back. Mm. I, I really like that idea. Um, someone who I idolize quite a lot, his name is Tyrese Gibson. I don't know if you know who he is. Um, he, he always says it's not lonely at the top if you help someone else get there. And I think that's a philosophy that a lot of uh, successful people live by because they're always willing to give uh, to help other people get to where they are. And I think it's a, obviously a concept in law of attraction as well. But uh, generally, like in, in life, when you put out good, you, you tend to get it in return. Um, Gerard, we're coming to the end of our conversation. And I've really enjoyed speaking with you. And I think it's been hugely valuable for myself mainly and, and anyone who is looking to become a coach or come, come into this field. Um, I'm just interested to know... Um, if you've already shared so much with us already, but is, if there's one thing that has helped you along your journey a lot that you want to pass on to the audience. Yes. Um, like any journey, like any business, 
they, you go through good times and you go through bad times, you know. And we all have the periods where you're sitting on your own, things are not going well, and you really begin to doubt, you, be, you begin to wonder if you're on the right, the right road. And what I would say is it's so important to have belief in what you do and to love what you do. So you don't, even though when you are successful, the money will come, don't do it for the money. Do it because you, you love doing what it is you do. And that's what I love about coaching. Coaching is such a satisfying thing to do with another human being. So make sure before you engage in any coaching program that you really look inside and say, is this what I want to do? Do I really want to be a coach? And for what reason? Is it because I want to make a lot of money? And if it is, well, maybe that's not the great, the greatest reason. But if it's because I love working with people, then great. But make sure you do it for the right reason. And number two, find a mentor. Get a mentor as quickly as you can. Mm, I think that's hugely valuable advice. And uh, for everyone in the audience who, who has got questions for you, who wants to get a hold of you, what, what's the best way for them to do that? Oh, I guess email would be good. Um, info, I-N-F-O, at noble-manhattan.com. That's N-O-B-L-E, and hyphen is the little minus sign that sits in the middle. Noble-manhattan, M-A-N-H-A-T-T-A-N.com. Cool. Thank you so much for giving me your time today, Gerard. I really appreciate it. And uh, on behalf of everyone who's going to learn from this in the future, thank you so much. Um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. You can get, catch the podcast every Wednesday and Saturday. And we'll see you next time. Peace.